Bible scriptures, and uh, if you don't turn to them, they'll have them up on the screen. But I want to begin with Acts chapter 2, and um, I want to read from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Here it is. And suddenly, say that with me, suddenly. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire that sat on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Now that is still in the Word of God and is still applicable today, and God is still filling people with His Holy Spirit. Let's not say that that ceased with the prophets. That's a lie from the pit of hell. It is. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Now I want you to turn to Romans. Romans chapter 9 verse 28. Romans 9 28. We're premising this. This is all of our thoughts upon on, on setting the stage for a season of suddenlies. That God's going to do some things quickly in your life and in my life that you never thought possible. Or that you thought possible but you've only been delayed but not denied. Come on, church. Paul wrote, speaking of the Lord, in, in Romans 9, 28. For he will finish the work, and he will cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon this earth. Oh, I could jump over this, this thing, but I'd hurt myself something fierce. So I can't do it. i got to contain myself. Hallelujah. And then would you turn to Isaiah. Isaiah. And we're going to begin with um, chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. And we're going to do verses um, 23, 26, and 27. For the Lord God of hosts will make a determined end in the midst of the land. Verse 26. And the Lord of hosts will stir up a scourge from him like the slaughter of, Mil of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And his rod was on the sea. So will he lift up the manner of Egypt. And then look at verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder. And his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. The yoke will be destroyed because of of the anointing oil. And then I want you to turn over to Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 21. For the Lord will rise up as Mount Perizim, and he will be angry at the valley of Gideon, that he may, that he may do his work, his awesome work, and bring it to pass, his act, and his unusual act. And then verse 22, And therefore do not be mockers, lest your bonds be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a destruction, a determined, even upon the whole earth will, and I'm going to add the words, transpire. You may be seated. This morning, I think it's very important for us as we embark on this journey. There's not one human being that's listening to the sound of my voice today that God has not made a promise to you. And not all of those promises have come to fruition, not in my life. And some of you have grown weary, and some of you have grown faint of heart, and some of you have even lost sight of the words that God has spoken to you and the promises that he's given to you. Those promises are not outside of the word of God. We're not looking for somebody to, to go out, you know, well, you know, I, I just, I, you know, I prayed for this, I prayed for that, and it's opposing God's word. Then that's, that's not going to be what God wants. But you know it's according to his word, it's according to his will, and it hasn't come to fruition yet. Is there anybody that's had a promise like that, and, 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 and you have kind of like forgotten about it? Or maybe you're reminded of it every day. Maybe it's that loved one to get saved. Maybe it's that cantankerous neighbor. Maybe it's, maybe it's just something that God just needs to do in your heart and life that he's promised that he's going to do, but it hasn't come to pass yet. And to quite honestly, you've given up on that vision, and you've given up on that word. 
Well, this series is going to bring what the Lord has spoken to you and he hasn't done yet to pass in your life. I believe we're going to see a season of suddenlies that God is going to do. And he's going to prepare our church for those seasons of suddenlies. I believe that he's going to descend upon us and he's going to cut that work short and he's going to do what man cannot do. And that hope that is deferred, that hope that's been delayed is going to come to fruition in your life and it's going to come to fruition in the life of this church. I believe that. I believe that. And I, you heard me say this before. I believe that with all of my heart, my whole heart. There have been prophetic words that have been spoken over my life. There have been prophetic words that have been spoken over this church. And maybe there's been some pathetic words that, that really were not spoken by God, but by man. But it will resonate with you, this series, because I'm telling you, you better get ready. Because God is fixing to, to, to just make that vision and that dream that lies dormant in your heart. He's going to bring it back to life and he's going to bring it to fruition. Oh, beloved, don't be faint of heart. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. God is still on the throne. The church has a birthright, an expectation of a sudden work. Now, God doesn't always do things suddenly. But there's a long period of time. But, you know, when a long period of time, when God cuts that short and speeds it up, whew, just like that, he can breathe on that situation and make that which is dead alive. And that which is dead and not alive in you, God's going to bring back that hope, that thing that he spoke to you several years ago. Maybe it's many years ago, and you have just lost sight of it. Well, this is what this whole series is all about. You better, you better get ready, because I'm a southerner today. God's fixing. God is fixing to do a suddenly. A suddenly in your life, in my life. Is there anybody that has had hope in your life and a promise in your life and you haven't seen it come to pass yet and you've been discouraged about it? Come on. All right. There's about four truthful people in this house. The, other, the rest of you just don't, you know, you're just afraid the camera might get on you. But I want you once again to turn to Romans 9.28. Romans, we're familiar with Romans 8.28, aren't we? Almost everybody knows that. And we know all things work together for good to those that love God are called according to his purposes. But I, but I want us to check out this verse because there's a couple of Old Testament uh, scriptures that we've read that, that even though it's not a direct quotation, it is, it is a summarization of, of what God is saying. He, he's paraphrasing. Right here, he is saying this implicitly. Paul writes, speaking of the Lord, for he will finish the work. He will cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon this earth. Is there anybody that's on the brink of miracle? Is there anybody that's been faint of heart and, and, and fearful and, and all kinds of things have happened to your life? And, and, you, and you're just clinging. You're still clinging. Your fingers are still clinging to that which God has promised you. But your heart is faint. It's hardly beating. Matter of fact, some of you have forgotten about that promise. And the Holy Spirit's going to remind you through this series of the promise that he gave to you that hasn't come to fruition. But God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, shall he not? Hath he spoken, shall it not come to pass? Listen, brother and sister, when God makes a promise, he brings it to pass. Don't let your delays be your denials. Don't let the enemy huff and puff in your life and say it's not going to happen. You just serve him. Notice, listen, old split foot. I'll give you size 12 right in your gluteus maximus. Get out of here. I rebuke you. I submit to God and resist the devil and he must flee. The promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. My, Pastor Wayne, you're feeling this. Oh, yes, I am. Because I've got some suddenlies that God's about ready to take care of that haven't come to fruition yet. Now, this is a, a quotation that Paul is lifting from the two Old Testament passages that we have read that are really paraphrasing this whole thing. Isaiah and Isaiah 10 and Isaiah 28. It's paraphrasing what Romans 9, 28 is saying. That he's going to finish the work. He's going to cut it short in righteousness because a short work will I make of it on this earth. Listen, there are people in government and all kinds of agencies that think that they've gotten by with a lot of stuff. But I'm telling you, everything that's been hidden is about ready to come to the light. But it's not only in government, it's in the church. God's going to unearth the things that are hidden. 
that are in secret. And I pray, oh God, if there's anything in my life that's hidden in the secret that I have blazed over that I'm not aware of, would you please bring it to light so that I can deal with it? Because you see, God doesn't want sin in the camp. He wants righteousness and holiness and purity. That doesn't mean that we don't fall down. We fall down. I've not seen anybody that, that, that you know, would, would just brag on their righteousness because that becomes self-righteousness. It's by the grace of God that I don't fall. But if I fall, I need to get back up and repent. If somebody falls, Reach out a hand and, and lift them up and help them. So I'm not saying that, that we are, we're goody two two shoes sh- sh- and we're all perfect. No. So the Holy Spirit is paraphrasing these, these different verses in the context of, of Romans um, 9.29. Now, now, in the verses of chapter 10 of Isaiah, and I've got to set this, this whole thing is very important that I set it in, 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 in stages this morning so that when we build upon this week after week, Isaiah 10 and in Isaiah 28, they read exactly like this quotation is not word for word, but again, it's paraphrased. So we, the church, a people were born suddenly. Listen, maybe it took a long time for you to be born again, to be saved, to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. But I want to tell you, when it happened, it happened suddenly. Suddenly he took all those sins away. Suddenly he, as far as the east is from the west, he removed our transgressions of suddenly, suddenly God came on the scene and saved us old cantankerous sinners. Hey, listen, do you remember what you used to be? Thank God you're not that. Thank God we're not what we should be. But he so loves us and will not allow us to be the same. He crossed his hands and picked the most unlikely. When you told somebody you were going to, you got saved, they said, what? Say what? What on earth is wrong with you? But I want to tell you what. Some people say, well, I get saved, I'm going to lose my friends. I want to tell you, if they're your friends and you get saved, they'll be happy you get saved. And if they're not, they're not your friends. They're not your friends. Hallelujah. We need to choose who we have a relationship with and who we spend time with. Now watch these these phrases in Isaiah 10 and Isaiah 28. It said, God will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Now now watch these two phrases. They're very important. Finish the work and cut it short. He's going to cut it short, shorter than what you... (laughs) Listen, when God does it suddenly, just like that, suddenly, it's amazing. So he's going to cut it short and he's going to finish the work. He's going to cut it short in righteousness. And, 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 and these are promises from God that he has promised to you and I. Has God made you a promise, church? Has God made anybody in this house besides Pastor Wayne a promise? Yes, but it's not fulfilled yet. Well, I'm here to encourage. I'm, I'm, listen, look at me. I, I'm a cheerleader today. I'm going to be a cheerleader today. I want to say, listen, faint of, of heart, people. Wake up and smell Jesus because the fragrance of his glory is in the house. And he wants to do something fabulous. He wants to do something fantastic. Even though that promise he made to you has not come to pass. Operative word, yet. Things that you know that you need, that God's promised. And and, and through the prophecy of the word of God and the confirmation of others. But it hasn't come yet. Now, I'm not talking about the yacht that you're going to be able to put into port. I'm not talking about the Maserati, or I'm not talking about, you know, Pastor Wayne getting a hole in one. Uh, I'm not talking about any of those things. I'm talking about you know what's in God's word. It's not diametrically opposed to his will, yet it hasn't happened, but it's a promise he's made to you. There have been promises made to this church in its, in its, in its, in its, in its uh, time of the stages of coming into life. There were two or three ladies that prayed, and there was a a man of God that came from California all the way to California. He he didn't have two pennies to rub together. There were times that he didn't have any food. They wanted to go to the grocery store, and his wife couldn't even buy any food. The church was not able to give him a really good salary or anything like that. But there would be a knock on the door, and that which she couldn't pick up the store. I I don't know if it was peanut butter and jam, but, but, but whatever it was, the exact thing she couldn't pay for, there was a knock at the door, and God brought it to fruition. That That's how this church was birthed. And the enemy has tried to rear his ugly head and shut us down ever since. But I served notice on the devil. He's a liar and the father of lies. And you know the next term. His his pants are on fire too. And he's an accuser of the brethren. And every promise that's been promised to this church is going to come to fruition. I'm believing for revival. I'm believing for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's going to raise the dead. It's going to heal the sick. It's going to fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. How's it going to happen suddenly 
suddenly, suddenly there was a mighty rushing wind. Hey, listen, if this preacher just shut up for two seconds and a big rushing mighty wind came here, I think that'd get our attention, wouldn't it? Huh? You'd say, oh, Father God. But I'm telling you, God has got something planned for you and I. Listen to me, church, this morning. The, 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 the Lord is saying, I want you, my people, to hear my voice today. I will finish that work and I will cut it short in righteousness. That means not that he's going to come short of fulfilling it. Don't misunderstand that. But it means he will cut the time shorter than you and I could ever imagine. I, I'm looking at some people that are on the brink of a miracle and some of you don't even have a clue. That's going to come to fruition. He's going to bring it to pass. I know what some of you are saying. Well, I want to get married. And you know what? We're a small church. You know, a big church, they might have more people to pick from. So I don't know, Lord. I'm here to tell you, don't get desperate, because if God made that promise, hallelujah, Joe Smo coming in on a white stallion, he won't, because we won't let, we won't let horses in the church, but one day he'll walk into this church. Your eye will hit his eye, and you will know there's about to be a suddenly. You haven't been praying for an old nag or anything like that. You've been praying, God, God, would you do it? And I'm here to tell you, don't get in a hurry. Because if you do, you'll birth an Ishmael. And he says, not only will I cut the time shorter, but I will do it by my righteousness, which means we're not going to be able to finagle it in the flesh. We're not going to be able to manipulate God. Oh, yeah, God. If I just do this and do that, you'll do that. No, it's going to happen in his time, in his will, his way, and no flesh is going to get glory. Amen. Right? Some of you are going to get such a blessing. Some of your family is going to say under their breath, he doesn't deserve it. They're going to say, oh, that's great. I'm happy. They don't deserve it. <laughs> well, let me just say something, church. None of us deserve it. I don't deserve one thing. But now that I've come to Christ and I'm standing on his word, I can claim every promise in his word. Hallelujah. So it's not going to come through the flesh. Now, I want to give you an example. Point number one is this. It's the example of Abraham. It's in Genesis chapter 15. You're not going to have that up there, but you can read it. Genesis 17, chapters 18 and 21. Abraham received the promise from God. We know the story that, that he's going to have a child. But that was a, a direct promise from the mouth of God. It lined up with the Word of God. See, I'm not asking for... God's not going to give you something frivolous that doesn't line up with the Word of God. Okay? It's got to line up with the Word of God and the will of God. And you've got to hang on to it. I've got to hang on to it. Well, oh, oh, Abe and Sarah, I mean, the promise didn't come to fruition. It was a perfect will of God. But the years go by, and they go by, and they're not getting any younger. They're not getting any younger. And, and Sarah's in menopause. And, and, and that word still hasn't come to fruition. And, and oh, Abe, he's, a, he, he's, a, he's 100 years old. And he's, it's still not fulfilled. And, 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 and how do you feel? Well, they were discouraged. They were distressed. They laughed at God when the angel came by. And, and, and probably that's how you and I feel. So what did they do? They, 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 tried to, they tried to outmaneuver God. And they got in a hurry. What do you mean? That, that, that um, Hagar, which is Sarah's concubine, uh, her helper, her aide, uh, Abraham took, took her in, and they conceived, and they, and they birthed an Ishmael. They birthed an Ishmael because that was out of the will of God. Don't try to get ahead of God. God will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. And he'll do it his way, by his will, and it will come to pass. And he didn't do it in righteousness. And listen, I'm here to tell you that Hagar, Ishmael is born through the flesh. And it becomes a lifelong problem of his descendants. And right now it's a big problem in the Middle East. It is. See, don't try to get ahead of God. I have gotten ahead of God. And listen to me. Don't truck walks at me. I have made mistakes. And I paid a price for it. That was then. This is now, baby. I'm not going back. I want to get it right now. Don't let the devil beat you up if you didn't get it right. You... Man, you got the armor of God on. Don't be a pansy. <laughs> Don't let him push you around. And he's not going to push this church around. We're in his will. And we're going we're gonna to pay tribute to his way. And God's going to fulfill every promise. So, you know, he, 
He didn't do it in righteousness. He took it on himself and tried to do it his way. Don't do it his way. Do it Yahweh. Yahweh is a name for, for God. And then here it is. Then the Lord. The Lord's work of miracles that, that was impossible with man. Sarah at the age of 90 and in menopause. And Abraham, <laughs> oh Abe, a hundred years old. None of that. God! 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 Nothing was reproductive in her system. Not, not the slightest. Paul writes that they were, they were dead in their, in their bodies and, 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 they, and, they, and they stand old and barren with shame and humiliation. And that's what the enemy's been doing in your life because he's given you a promise. God's given you a promise, but you haven't laid hold of it. Some of you have even forgotten about it and the Holy Spirit's going to remind you of that. Oh, it might lie dormant, but God's going to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. God Almighty said that you would have a child. Genesis 17, 21. That's how I'm going to prove it. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this set time next year. Well, that will preach about this time next year. That's a good message. <laughs> That's for another time. About this time next year. And guess what? What God promised, he brought it to pass. Suddenly, you will have the power to conceive. Think of it. That old man, Abraham, clung unto the promise for years, and it didn't come to fruition. But right at the time that was needed, God cut that time short. He abbreviated that time, and he brought it to pass. That's what he's going to do. I prophesy. That's what he's going to do in your life. That's what he's going to do in my life. That's what he's going to do in new life. Hold on to that promise, baby. Hold on to it, sir. Hold on to it, mister. Don't let it go. Hold on to the promises of God, which are yes and amen man in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the devil might huff and puff and say, oh, that wasn't God's promise. That was your own thinking. That was your own ingenuity. That was your own conniving. No, God spoke it to your heart. It confirmed by the word of God. It's in the will of God that he's going to cut it short and he's going to bring it to pass. He's going to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. He's going to bring it to pass. And with the chips are down, backs against the wall no church no 1-800 number nobody to get them out God comes and he says old man old lady don't call your wife an old lady <laughs> those are fighting words that would be stupid for you to do that gentlemen if you get a black eye I'm not going to come to pray for you either that's not using wisdom but that old man and that old lady barren as barren can be God, God caused that conception in Genesis chapter 21, 1 through 3. God cut it short, and he did it, not through the flesh, but he cut it short, and he finished it, the work that he wanted to do. And how did he do it? He did it in righteousness, in righteousness. So after decades of waiting, God said, I want to cut it short of my righteousness. I want to bring it to pass. But you say, Pastor Wayne, that's good for Abe and Sarah. But what about me? I ask, are you a child of the living God? Do you believe in the promises of God? Do you believe he's spoken some things to your heart? And you've grown weary in your well-doing because, because you've even forgotten about that promise? And you've given up on that promise? Maybe it's your nephew. Maybe it's your niece. Maybe it's someone else. Maybe it's a situation. Maybe it's the circumstances. Maybe, maybe it's a family that you've been reintroduced to. Maybe it's a, a, a loved ones. Uh, whatever it might be. You, you fill in the blank. Whatever it is. If God has spoken it to your heart, it's good for, for all those unfulfilled promises that God has given us that haven't been manifested yet, haven't come to pass yet. We've got to believe God for. Every promise over this church every promise over my life, every promise over your life, suddenly God said, I'm going to finish it and I'm going to do it quicker than you would ever imagine. Has God ever done something like that for you? Has God ever done something that you weren't even looking for and God just dropped it that way? He has for me. I mean, God's blessed me so much. God blessed me to be able to get to Maine financially and be able to get back. He just, he just blessed me. He did it. 
I was able to, to, to have that service, and, 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 it, and it was a memorial service. And, and one of the young men, Richard, that's come to this church before, that I used to job shadow when I was in between churches working at Winslow High School, he recommitted his life to the Lord. And I believe his sister, his sister that he was just reintroduced to his sister that he didn't even know. He was adopted. And also his brother. It was his brother that died at 45. And his sister, I had a chance to meet her. The whole family, I believe they're going to go to that church, and they weren't going anywhere. I believe that. That's a rendezvous from heaven. God crosses his hands. God makes a way where there is no way. Then all of a sudden, you wait for something so long that you get gray hair and a bunch of wrinkles. Hallelujah. But then God brings it to pass. He brings it to pass. And how does he do it suddenly? I want us today, in these next few days and weeks in the, in the winter months, I want us to expect God for a season of suddenlies. I want to look at a scripture in Proverbs 13, 12. If you have time, you want to turn there, you can. Proverbs 13, 12. It's a very familiar scripture. It says, hope deferred, put off, or postponed makes the heart sick. So how does the heart beat, Pastor Wayne? How does it behave when it's deprived of the realization of its hope? A number of ways. Number one, the sickness of heart is not heart disease in this particular instance. You know what it is? It's, it's with the surrender of our lives. We've surrendered to depression. We've surrendered to discouragement. We have surrendered to hopelessness. I'm looking into this camera and some of our people that count new life as their, as their church and, and, their, and their body is in compromise, their immune system is in compromise, but they are bound in their home by fear. That is not the will of God. The, 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 the government shut the church down once. He's not going to shut it down again. If he does, we're going underground. We're going to home churches, right? But we're not. And I want to I look right into that camera. I bind that fear in the name of Jesus. I take authority over that in Jesus' name. Get up off your couch. Get your kids. If you want to put masks on them, put masks on them. And get them out to the house of God. You say, Pastor, I'll never come back again when you preach like that. Well, listen, at least I have delivered the word of God. You are being deceived. You are being deceived. You have taken the bait. And you have been comfortable. And you're watching me in your PJs when you should be putting on your Sunday best and being here. I love you with all of my heart. Hallelujah. Somebody has to say it, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so the sickness of heart it's because of heaviness and a discouragement, a sense of hopelessness, hopelessness, and you've made it an excuse. It's a giving in to, 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 to weariness, to fear, to loneliness, to isolation. Your family needs you. Your family here at New Life needs you. If you're looking for a church, we need you. We'll take anybody and everybody. Doesn't care how you look, what your income is, or where you live. You live under a bridge someplace, or if you live in a million dollar house, it doesn't matter. God is calling people, and He's reminding us that He's about ready to do some things in our life. I believe that God has given me some promises. He's spoken to my heart many years ago, and He gave me some promises that haven't come to fruition yet. I know they're in the Word of God, I believe they're in the will of God. And the Lord has reminded me and said, I want you to remind my people that which I've spoken to their heart. Listen, some of you are weary. Some of you are downtrodden. Some of you are tired. Some of you are discouraged. Some of you are, might be even fearful. But hear me, no weapon formed against you will prosper. He who has begun a good work in you shall perform it. Amen. Hallelujah. A Zipporah. I mean, I believe you're going to hear suddenly. And that Kenyan government that's slower than cold molasses running up a hill on a June day is going to say, yep, yeah, you, can, you can open that. Uh, uh, it's, going to be, it's either going to be a rescue mission or an orphanage. But, and, and guess what? God's going to have the money there right when that happens. In the meantime, you're still going to feed the hungry, you're still going to minister, and the work of the call of all still goes on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It doesn't, I'm not asking, I'm not saying something that contradicts the word of God. But I have a, I have a word from the Lord. I'm going to hold on to it. Look at me. 
don't be weary in well-doing. You shall reap if you faint not. Yeah. Hang in there. Yeah. I'm here to tell you it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. God's going to bring it to pass. I'm asking right now that God will, he's always has, you know what, they can, they can say preachers can't go anywhere, they can't go here, and they can't pray for the sick, and they can't have a funeral, and this and that, but I want to tell you what, Jesus is making hospital visits right now into homes, and he's taking that which has a blood disease, and he's touching that person from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. He's touching that sister who is, who is body is riddled with pain, unable to be here, wants to be here. It's not that they don't want to be here. They want to be here. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you do something suddenly and quick? On Golgotha's brow, you took stripes upon your back for our healing. By your stripes we are healed. Will you enter into that room right now? Would you magnanimously and prolifically and just super, 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 super quickly. Would you touch that person and raise them up? Would you confound the doctors? Hallelujah. Would you touch that person in this church service right now in pain? Would you cause that pain to leave in the name of Jesus? You say you are crazy. I am crazy, madly in love. I believe everything in this book is true, and I believe it's for now. And guess what? I believe it's mine. Every chapter, every verse, and every line. Now, sickness of the heart can also find itself in a frantic activity. Listen to me. Just because you haven't received your promise or you're suddenly let, yet, yeah, don't get frantic and try to make it happen because you'll birth an Ishmael. Well, I'm going to get all dolled up. I'm going to have my, my nails done. I want to come to church, and anybody that's available, especially that one I've been looking for, they're going to seek me out. <laughs> oh, better still, i got somebody out there in the world, and I know they're going to get saved. I'll just pull them up, and they'll pull you down quicker than you pull them up. Some people have done that, but that's very dangerous. That's the exception, not the rule. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, pastor, I'm getting older. Yeah, but you're still beautiful. You're still handsome. You've still got God's blessing on your life. He's still with you. He hasn't forsaken you. Come on, church. Jesus. This is exactly what happened to Abraham. You see, you can surrender your heart to discouragement and disbelief, but we can also have or allow our hearts to go into frantic, frantic activity trying to make something happen. I don't want to make something happen. I'm not going to, listen, there have, been, there have been things that have come under the guise of revival that people have stirred up, not God. And you know what that's been? It's been an Ishmael. It's been the flesh. I don't want the flesh here. When God moves, I want it to be God. I want it to be Him. And I, I, I just want, because when it happens, Pastor Wayne's not going to be taking any offering and I'm not going to be preaching. We're all going to be sucking carpet. We're going to be on our face before, before God because God's going to move in such a powerful, sovereign way. We won't even be able to budge. We're going to be in His presence. And guess what? We're not going to have to even, at the local Christian station, we're not going to have to advertise. People are going to come from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. Ah, uh, you might not believe it, but I do. That's why I'm still here. That's why I haven't given up. Hallelujah. That's why I will not give in. Because I know I do not want to try to foster some kind of frantic activity. That, that is not going to work. It's the flesh. So I want, to, I want to close today by saying, so what is it that God has promised you? What is it that he has spoken to your heart? And it looks so, so impossible. You know he spoke it to your heart. It's in, the, it's in the word, right? And it's in the will of God. But the time has gone by and by and by. And your hope is deferred. You've almost given up. But Pastor Wayne is being obedient to the to the will of God and the word of God for these winter months, we are going to explore scripture on the suddenness of God. And we are going to see God do 
in our life what man could not do. Stand with me, would you please? I hope you got this, church. I mean, take those scriptures, right? Write them down. Write them down. Go over them. Acts 2.2. 2. Romans 9.28. Isaiah 10.23. 26 and 27. Um, Isaiah 28. And particularly verses 21 to 22. You can read all the way down to 29. And we're going to talk about those scriptures. You say, well, Pastor, we, we read some scriptures. I don't understand them. We're going to break it down so that we'll understand it. But I, I don't only want your heads bowed right now. I just, I just want you looking at me just for a second. Or look to him, I should say. Don't. Let discouragement. Don't become faint of heart. Don't look at yourself as damaged goods. Look at yourself as somebody who's very special, who belongs to Jesus, that he sent his one and only son to die for you. And you've just given up hope. It's not going to happen to me. Oh, you rejoice. You rejoice over what happens in other people's life, but under your breath, you're saying, why not me, Lord? Why not me? Why is this sickness hung on my body? Why is this discouragement and this loneliness and this depression following me every day of my life? I'm here to tell you, God is going to cut it short. He's not going to cut short his righteousness. He's going to do it in his righteousness. It's going to, he's going to cut it short. And that what you have been waiting for, for so long, it's going to happen. Happen. Father God, I just want to thank you this morning. Thank you for the freedom of the Holy Spirit. I feel your anointing, Father. I thank you for the word. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, I call hope that is dormant in people right here this morning. And those that are viewing this to rise up. Even though that has been delayed, they're not going to be denied. And the enemy has been lurking about, laughing at them, teasing them, getting in their face. They've seen other people, that which they pray for, receive almost so easily. And it hasn't happened to them yet. But the operative word is yet. And yet, Lord, we're not going to get in such a hurry that we're going to try to make something happen in the flesh. Been there, done that, don't want the t-shirt, don't need the tape. But Father, you're a God of restoration. And I pray right now that the restoration power of the Holy Spirit breathe all over that one that's been riddled with guilt and the enemy has been driving them to the ground. Saying, look at you, you're a loser. Look what you did. You messed up your life. Well, I want you to know something, devil. When you remind me of my past, I remind you of your future. You're going to blip. You're going to bake in the lake. And Father, I pray right now, if there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, and anybody that's viewing this at home, that they would understand that God, God, in the fullness of time, sent forth his son Jesus, who died on the cross of Calvary for us. And that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, Father, I pray right now that they'll pray a prayer similar to this. God, I know that you're the one and only Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Remove my sins as far as the east and west. God, give me a brand new start. And Lord, speak to my heart that which you want to do and help me to hold on to it until it comes to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. I want Scott to come back up and sing one of those songs, whatever you desire to sing. And we're gonna, we're gonna dismiss. But um, I, want you to, I want you to strap on your belts, your seat, seat belts, or take them off. I want us in the next few weeks to hone in on the suddenness of God. Did God just, didn't he not just, you know, it was a long time, you were stubborn, but, but when he saved you, did he not do it suddenly? It didn't take a long time. Whew! All the sins were washed away. So, so don't try to fish them back up again. They're buried. They're buried. Amen. I love you. It's great.
good to be back home. I'm excited about this new journey that we're on. I really, really am. <laughs> Look out, Westfield. Look out, Pioneer Valley. Look out. Because we're coming after you. If nobody, nobody's going to give you the message, we're going to give you the message of hope. Amen. And you see that little, shy, timid man over there, the good-looking guy? He's got a bowl in his hands. Hallelujah. So if you want to contribute, that's great. Praise God. Okay, let's praise and worship the Lord. And as we do this, you feel dismissed. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You cannot say, well, we were kept here for so long time. There's going to come a time where you're not even going to see the watch. You're not. We, none of us will. Because we're going to be so engrossed in God. Right? Amen. So let's praise God. Amen. the house.